At CES this year, AMD decided to not talk about one of their most anticipated products for the last couple of years in RDNA 4. However, we have some new leaks and the chief architect of AMD gave interviews with more details. Why didn't AMD announce RDNA 4 at CES? When will they be announced? And what kind of prices can we expect? Let's get into it. At AMD's keynote at CES this week, AMD said the following. We absolutely love the gaming community and we look forward to telling you more about RDNA 4 and FSR 4 later this quarter. And that was it. RDNA 4 later this quarter. What made this even more baffling was the fact that all the AIBs had the 9070 GPUs ready and on display at their booths. These aren't prototype looking devices, these are production GPUs. The two biggest conferences a year where you want to reveal your products, CES and Computex, and AMD pulled the presentation at the last minute. We also had a couple of leaks demonstrating the performance. The first one was from IGN where they ran the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 in-game benchmark and the performance was very much above the 7900 XT. And I know there is some question under that benchmark and its settings and maybe it is too good to be true. Also in the forums at Chip Hell, someone posted a TimeSpy Extreme score which shows that it is faster than the 7900 XT. And the Speedway benchmark says the GPU ray traces as good as the 7900 XTX or a 4070 Ti Super. And now we have another leak from the Chip Hell forums for a 9070 XT in two very demanding games, that's Cyberpunk and Black Myth Wukong, with ray tracing enabled. The performance demonstrated further confirms the 9070 XT ray tracing performance is like a 4070 Ti Super. If the 9070 XT is like a 7900 XT Plus, and it ray traces like a 4070 Ti Super, then why wouldn't AMD want to tell the world? With another massive disappointment after the keynote, immediately after the event, AMD leadership, including Dave McAfee and Frank Azor, agreed to sit down with a small group of tech journalists for a roundtable talk. AMD says that the 45-minute keynote address didn't provide sufficient time, and I'm going to just stop right there and call it BS. It's not like they made the presentation the night before and then said, oh darn, the presentation is too long. What are we gonna do? No, these presentations need approval from the company lawyers and that takes weeks. This excuse is lame and certainly not the reason they pulled RDNA 4 from their keynote. Jensen spent five minutes in his keynote. I watched AMD's keynote and AMD had all kinds of five minute blocks of time that they could have replaced with the more important RDNA 4 announcement. Also in their roundtable talk, AMD said that it got a lot of praise as well as a lot of flack from the RDNA 3 generation and is trying to replicate the things that brought it praise. The RX 7000 series only had a couple of home runs such as the RX 7800 XT and the RX 7900 GRE and the company's efforts will be to replicate the success of those products. I have to ask, how do AMD execs define success? Logic and reasoning would say that it would be measured by sales, right? I have not seen the 7800 or the GRE at the top of the sales charts from Amazon, Newegg, or Micro Center, and I look at this stuff weekly. Those two GPUs are not even in the Steam hardware survey. You can find the 7900 XTX. You can even find the 7700 XT but not those GPUs that AMD considers to be home runs. The 7900 XTX in the survey makes sense to me since I've seen it in the top 10 to 15 in sales consistently at micro centers and even at Newegg at times. So that only leaves praise and flack that defines success for them. More praise and less flack equals home runs and success. Does anyone else see the disconnect in thinking? If they went after sales, the praise would follow. It's obvious the AMD executive's pay is not based on Radeon sales, just some sort of praise to flack ratio. I'm gonna chalk this up to AMD bubblehead logic and move on. Now leaks suggest the 9070 XT will be better than the 7900 XT. And like in my last video, Nvidia's RTX 50 series will have about a 30% improvement, but that includes ray tracing which means pure rasterization is definitely less than that. AMD provided a slide in a pre-briefing that attempts to explain the new naming conventions and branding. 
I love slides like this because it leaves little clues as to how AMD actually thinks. So on the left, you have NVIDIA's RTX 40 series of GPUs, and on the right, Radeon's 7000 GPUs. Now, many think that this represents performance levels. It is not. Just to test that theory, the 7900 XTX is not lower than a 4080. The 7900 XT equivalent to a 4070 Ti? Nope, I tested both those cards, and the 7900 is faster. The 7700 XT lower than a 4060 Ti? No, the 7700 XT crushes that card. This is not performance. It's a marketing slide. It's just branding. How does AMD's brand of products match up with the competition? And from this slide, you can see the 9070 series as a big block as it goes from the 7900 XT down to partially into the 7800 XT. But that doesn't make sense until you draw a line from the top of the 4060 Ti and now it makes sense. AMD is targeting the 9070 to compete with the 70 and 70 Ti and certainly not the 60 Ti. Hence the simplify branding and copycat naming. They have their 70 series pitted against Nvidia's 70 series. I hate the way AMD drew the big box for the series since we all know it's just two cards, a 9070 XT and a 9070. Let's fix that. Now leaks are like pieces of a puzzle and you have to take the pieces of information that are leaked to put them together in an overall picture. AMD provided the slides with all the 9070 GPUs on a slide. And we know that two of these represent AMD's reference models. The three fan is the XT and the two fan is the non XT. The three fan is suitable for 330 Watts rating while the smaller two fan would be suitable for about 265 Watts just like the two fan designs of the 6700 XT and the 7800 XT before it. Now I ran through multiple scenarios in an attempt to understand why AMD did not show RDNA 4 at CES, but I'll just walk through the most plausible one. First, AMD needs to understand how they would market the new GPU against their previous generations to explain to people why the new one is better than the old one. Now the 7900 XT started out at $900 and nobody wanted to buy that card. I even stated before the launch that it needed to drop in price to $750 for it to be interesting. By the end of its life, the 7900 XT was selling between $650 and $70. Using AMD logic from pricing the 7800 XT against the 6800 XT last time, AMD marketing wizards would price this at $650 to $699 and I would call this the AMD greedy scenario. You get 7900 XT plus performance with better ray tracing and FSR4. So they sell you on ray tracing and features. Likewise, the 7900 GRE started out at $650, then came down in price to 550, and I even saw it on sale for $519 over the holidays. Again, using AMD logic, they would price the 9700 at $500 to $550 and say you get GRE plus performance with better ray tracing and FSR4. Again, features. But this AMD greedy scenario only works if you have Nvidia also being greedy this generation. Now there was a lot of rumors about how expensive the 5080 and 5090 would be at launch. And I think the marketing wizards at AMD were drinking the Kool-Aid by the gallon and expected NVIDIA's 50 series to move up in price, even if it was only 50 bucks. So for AMD, not much of a big rasterization improvement, but features and ray tracing and AI and FSR4. If you've ever been to a conference, you know that people talk, especially when drinking. Somehow I suspect AMD found out at the show that NVIDIA wasn't going to be greedy this generation. They likely didn't know exact pricing until later that evening like the rest of us, but I'm sure they caught wind of the rumors that huge price increases were false, or at the very least, greatly in doubt. AMD executives had a choice to make. Look stupid by pulling the presentation, or potentially look even stupider by presenting RDNA 4. Maybe even risk losing their jobs. Well, we all know what they chose. Pull the RDNA 4 material and wait for NVIDIA to present. But the one thing that puzzles me is why did Jack say, And we look forward to telling you more about RDA4 and FSR4 later this quarter. Later in Q1 doesn't seem likely as the new rumor is January 22nd announcement with pre-orders starting two days later on January 24th. 
but I'm not too optimistic based on recent statements from Frank Azor during an interview. He stated that most people will see it as a good product for a good price. Good. Not great, not fantastic. Good. He also said, its balance of power and price will be comparable to the RX 7800 XT and 7900 GRE. Again, references to the two home run GPUs. Now we just had a leak on pricing and the 9070 XT from a retailer in the Philippines and it shows $600. This would strongly imply that based on the leak and Frank's statements for good, the pricing is going to look like this where the 9070 XT will offer similar performance to a 5070 Ti, maybe a little less, but lack NVIDIA features for $599. That would be a $150 Delta, and that might be enough to entice people to buy. The 9070 will likely be priced under $500, like $479 to $499, and offer similar performance, maybe a little bit less, but without NVIDIA features. However, you do get 16 gigabytes of VRAM, not the paltry 12 gigabytes on the 5070. This kind of pricing represents good. Not great or fantastic, just good. Remember, AMD thinks the 7800 and the GRE represent home runs, so I don't expect much better pricing than this. Although I know if AMD really wanted to take market share like Jack said earlier, then they need to come up with disruptive pricing. They need to be aggressive and price the 9070 XT at $499 and the 9070 at $399. These things would fly off shelves and they would actually be able to take market share. They would also start to build mindshare with the community just like Intel did with the release of the B580. Remember, nobody knows who Radeon is anymore and they are fighting Nvidia mindshare. They need to come out swinging and fight for that market share. I don't think they can get there by being good. They need to be great. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think AMD's good pricing is enough to take market share? Or should AMD jump straight to disruptive pricing to gain market share? If that 9070 XT is $600 or less, then I'm getting one to benchmark and to find out how it compares. Like it if you learned something, share it, and consider subscribing. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.